Hello, wonderful person. Look at this beautiful star. Wait, what is this? Science alert? Huh? What is this article? A jaw-dropping binary star is about to go supernova and could produce a gamma ray burst? What? Sydney astronomer discovers APAP star system ready for supernova? Huh? USA Today doomed pinwheel star system to explode in spectacular gamma ray burst? What? Okay, Hang Green, you're my last hope. Is this for real? I don't want to alarm you, but we might be sitting next to the largest bomb in the galaxy. It's a star just 8,000 light years away, and when it explodes, it could release more energy in seconds than the sun will emit in its entire lifetime. What? There is a supernova that's about to happen? Oh my god, I gotta get off the planet. Okay, guys, I'm gonna pack my bags, don't go anywhere. What do I need to bring with me? I guess I'm gonna have to bring my Switch, right? There's so many games I have to finish. I didn't really plan for this supernova event. Jesus, what am I gonna do? Wait a second. How is it that this is the first time I'm hearing about this? Also, why is it that every article that I seem to be uh, finding on Google has a very clickbaity title? Huh, something's not right here. Let's investigate. So, is there actually going to be a supernova happening pretty much any moment now and we're about to be destroyed completely and basically the life on Earth is about to finish? Or is this a complete and total clickbait and basically none of this is true? Let's just do this really quickly. So, I'm gonna go in here. This is, of course, the um, repository of pretty much all major scientific uh, publications. I'm going to type the name of the star and... Okay, actually, we're gonna type the real name of the star, which is uh, this, and find out that, okay, well, there's that paper that they're talking about. But how come the title of the paper doesn't say anything about supernova? Or total destruction? Or that we're in danger? Or anything of that other thing that everyone said that is going to happen? Okay, so let's find out what's really happening here. As you can probably tell from my cheesy introduction, none of this is true. We are not going to be destroyed by a supernova. We are not going to experience some kind of a deadly event anytime soon. And as a matter of fact, none of those titles or even the actual articles um, say anything that is more or less true. Here's what really happened. The star they're talking about has actually been discovered uh, back in 2004. This is the star with a funny name, 2XMM, I'm not gonna try to pronounce this. It's uh, also nicknamed APAP because it has this really funky looking snake-like formation and resembles uh, the Egyptian deity by the name of APAP. It's the snake thingy here. And I guess if you kind of squint your eyes, there's a bit of a similarity. But that's not the point here. The point is that it's the star that we discovered um, pretty much a decade ago. In the last two years, uh, since 2016, the person who published this paper, the Australian by the name of uh, Joseph Callingham, um, who was actually doing his PhD at this time, was investigating the star and he actually was able to take this incredible photo that you see right here that um, kind of showed us that in this particular system there is something really interesting happening and specifically what's known as a pinwheel nebula. We've seen these before and we kind of know what's really happening here. Uh, for the most part, it's two very large stars and actually let me show you the um, animated version of this. It's two very large stars, um, specifically wolf Riot stars um, that are really, really, really large transition stage of stars similar to the one that we have right here. These are really massive, um, very unstable stars that normally um, release a lot of energy, a lot of material, and um, for the most part, create a relatively large cloud around themselves. Now, if it's a lonely star like this one right here, it essentially creates something similar to this. But if it's a binary star, because there's actually two stars kind of mixing things together, it creates this uh, very beautiful pinwheel pattern that you see right here. And um, for the most part, this was already exciting because we don't really know that many pinwheel nebula out there. And um, one of the sort of more famous wolf Rayet stars is the so-called Eta Carina that I've talked about in one of the previous videos. However, what's interesting in this system, and this is actually the most important part of this particular study and really kind of the meat and uh, potatoes of the entire research behind it, is that the gas here doesn't move as fast as it should be moving. After they did a full observation, they realized that this gas that um, is emitted by these stars was actually moving slower, way, way slower than um, anticipated. And the um, more reasonable explanation to all of this was that it's very likely that the actual gas that moves slow is released from the uh, equatorial region. Uh, and if the star spins really fast, 
when the gas is released, it's not going to have a lot of velocity. And the fast gas is released from the polar regions, which is why we think that we actually see two regions of gas, one moving fast and one moving really slow. And uh, for the most part, it actually kind of makes sense. The other thing we know about fast moving Wolf Rayet stars is that um, if they move or if they spin really, really, really fast, when they actually go supernova, which is anywhere from a few thousand years to a few million years, it really depends on the star. It's not going to happen tomorrow, trust me. Uh, for the most part, these stars, they actually emit a tremendously large, um, kind of a cone-like jet of uh, gamma rays that will often result in a type of an emission known as ultra-long gamma ray burst. Basically, a gamma ray burst that could last for a few minutes or even a few days. Now, um, because the star is 8,000 light years away from us, it really doesn't mean much. Um, and the star is also not really pointing its sort of rotational axis at us, so we're pretty safe. Um, but even if this gamma ray burst was at some point to reach our planet, the only thing it would actually do is slightly modify our atmosphere. It would most likely cause a little bit of concern for the ozone layer. It may produce a few... Um, nitrogen oxide molecules that could potentially cause a little bit of um, acid rain and a few other atmospheric effects, but it's clearly not going to cause any destruction to anything. As a matter of fact, there's not going to be any extinction whatsoever. Now, the problem with these articles is that, I guess because the study overall seemed exciting, but then when they read the actual study, they realized it wasn't really that fun, they wanted to make it sound fun. And so they introduced this idea that this could go supernova anytime. So, you know, pack your bags, get off the planet. But the scientific realist that I am had to investigate, and within a few uh, minutes, literally, it took me less than two minutes to realize that there was nothing in the paper, as a matter of fact, absolutely nothing in this paper about any kind of supernova going, going off anytime soon. The only three times uh, that they mentioned supernova is in a hypothetical scenario when this happens, possibly in like a million years from now. And so while we're watching this really, really beautiful creation from the European Southern Observatory, um, I would like to just essentially end this video by saying be very careful about what you read in a title and be also very careful about believing these exceptionally unrealistic news about space events destroying Earth. It's definitely not going to come anytime soon, and if it is going to come, you're going to know about this from actual scientists, not from the media sources. And anyway, so here we are zooming into this beautiful system and you're about to see where this particular star is located at about 8,000 light years away from us. And interestingly, the um, actual scientists discovered it using the um, investigation from the very large telescope, which kind of looks like this, which is actually part of the European Southern Observatory. And um, the author of this paper had to book his time there and it took him a while to get the time and he essentially just wanted to study the star based on a complete hunch and so in that sense it's actually a pretty interesting study because he had a hunch that something was going on in this particular system something was happening and he really didn't expect to even see this um, and then when they actually got the photo and the, they actually got the picture pretty much um, everyone in the scientific community was really excited that this is what we've discovered and so in some sense this discovery right here has now actually uh, taken the place of the other uh, really famous Wolf Riot star, um, which is right here, it's the Eta Carina system. And I've talked about the system in one of the previous videos, but essentially this, for the longest time, was the most exciting Wolf Riot um, star system that we think is going to go supernova um, within the next few hundred thousand or maybe a million years. And this system is actually part of the very beautiful Carina Nebula, and creates this exceptionally beautiful um, homunculus nebula that is actually quite well known and is m actually one of the most famous uh, nebula out there. So anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video. Essentially, be careful what you're uh, hearing. And I know I'm kind of guilty by association. Back in the days when I was still trying desperately to grow my channel, I also was responsible for a few clickbait um, titles and even creating thumbnails that were kind of clickbaiting. But I guess sometimes people take it a little bit too far. And I think this is definitely an example of going a little bit too far because um, despite it being a jaw drop in binary, it's not about to go supernova. On that note, uh, let's escape the beautiful Carina Nebula and let's go on an adventure across space. And if you still haven't subscribed, consider subscribing, share this video with someone who learns, wants to learn about space and sciences, but also loves learning through simulations and video games, and maybe even consider supporting on this channel on Patreon. And that way I won't actually have to rely on so much clickbait. Just kidding. 
Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'm going to unpack my bag, but still play some Nintendo Switch. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.